for my background. <laughs> Hello everyone, sorry for the long time no see. I, as you may or may not be able to tell, I moved house again. This is my new beautiful room slash background. I actually have 12 books that I'm going to be talking about today and I don't want this video to be a million years long so I'm going to try and get through all of them fairly quickly but not rush at the same time. So let's begin with a very, very tiny book, and it is The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. It's about a woman who's essentially a con artist, and just like all of other Gillian's books, uh, is a very shitty, not very nice person, and it's kind of twisted. It's very unusual, even for a Gillian Flynn book. It feels really bizarre and kind of surreal, and is kind of spooky, which I really liked. I love a spooky book. Basically, if you're a Gillian Flynn fan, I would recommend picking this up. It's not a very big investment of your time, it's very quick, it's a good read, uh, and I thought it was just a lot of fun. So I would recommend this. I gave it four out of five. So next is a book that is so incredibly hyped and I didn't want to believe it, and then I read it because I was just randomly in the mood, and it turns out that everyone was right, and it's incredible, and it's now one of my favourite books ever. Maybe I should tell you what it is. It's Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I just, I was completely obsessed. Whenever I wasn't reading this, was thinking about it. So this is an urban fantasy novel that is perfectly summed up by the quote that it's a mix of X-Men and The Count of Monte Cristo. Brilliant, dramatic revenge story between characters that are so incredibly, like, hateful. All you want to do is hate them, but I just absolutely fell in love with them. I don't know what it was. The characters and the writing were on point. Everything was on point. I absolutely loved it would totally recommend it, gave it 5 out of 5 stars. So I've been reading a ton of audiobooks lately uh, because I've been trying to use up my Audible credits and the first ones I'm going to be talking about is Forgive Me Leonard Peacock by Matthew Quick. I really really enjoyed this book, I don't want to do any kind of disservice to this book because I think it's brilliant but I kind of feel like it may have been marketed in the wrong way because I thought it was a school shooting book and that's not what it is. It's more of a character study. I feel like this book summarised really well the kind of effects it can have on a person when they are not getting the right kind of treatment in every way, in medical and personal ways uh, and the effects of neglect um, and just not getting enough love. I feel like it did that really really well and it handled the characters in a really realistic and believable way. It's got some real heroes in there as well and you really root for everyone. It's pretty heavy, it definitely hit my heart very hard but I really really enjoyed it and I give it 4 out of 5. I would definitely recommend this one. I've read two summer contemporaries in the dead of winter which I know is a bit strange but I'm going to quickly talk about them now and the first one is My Life Next Door by Hutley Fitzpatrick. So as you will probably know already this is a contemporary that obviously focuses on the romance between a boy and a girl who live next door but it really focuses on the family dynamics of both of those people and how they kind of interweave and how they get involved in each other's lives and obviously it gets pretty dramatic uh, and I just really liked how it was handled. If you feel like you're lacking a good romance story that doesn't ignore the families then I would definitely go for this one. I think it is just done really well. It was really really sweet but not outstanding so I gave it a 4 out of 5. So the next summer contemporary is a bit different, it's a bit weirder. It is called The Square Root of Summer by Harriet Ruta Hapgood. It's got some really strange uh, and really unusual elements in there that you wouldn't normally see in a contemporary. Well, I don't really want to give away because I feel like that's the joy of reading it and watching it all unfold and being like, what the fuck is going on? I do not understand what happened to the summer contemporary. One of the themes that it deals with very well is grief, uh, as the main character's grandfather passed away, who was one of the men who raised her, and it's really, really sad and super emotional. Um, but again, it's just a really different contemporary. It does have a romance in it, but it doesn't centre around it. And I just think it's really great and I would recommend it if you haven't read it already. Definitely read it in the summer as well, because it's super summery. And I gave that 3.5 out of 5. So my friends, the next book that I read was my favourite book of last year. One of my favourite books of all time. Can't think about it without feeling really overwhelmed and emotional. It was... Winter by Marissa Meyer. Let's take a moment. If you don't know already, this is the fourth and final book in the Lunar Chronicles series. It was a beautiful, wonderful conclusion to the series. It's an absolute monster and it is such a roller coaster ride. This literally is the epitome. It is the meaning of a roller coaster book. It is absolutely all over the place. It is non stop. Obviously, I gave this five stars, eight million stars, 12 million stars all of the stars. 
I'm gonna have to read it again. I can't go on. I just can't. So the next book that I read was sent to me by Walker Books very, very kindly, and it is The Dark Days Club by Alison Goodman. I read it when I had heard absolutely nothing about it. I was like, great, a brand new book with absolutely no expectations attached, and it's historical, and I'm really in the mood for historical. Amazing. This is the first book in a new historical fantasy series. I don't really want to compare it to the Infernal Devices because I almost feel like that would do it a bit of a disservice. It feels much more mature than that. It feels incredibly well researched and like you are really, really there. I don't want to insult Infernal Devices because you know how much I love that series, but this feels very, very different. It doesn't follow the same kind of tropes that you'd find in a lot of those kind of books. One of the other things that I really liked about this book was the magic system <laughs> was so weird. It was so weird. It's like really weirdly sexual and I don't mean like I don't mean I found it sexual or anything like it the content is actually quite sexual and it's really strange I don't really know what to make of it but if you just embrace it it's great it's totally fine props to Alison Goodman for doing something different it's different there is also some romance in there but it only kind of dips your toe into the pool of romance it's only a little dip it doesn't submerge you it's not like overwhelming it's really subtle I really appreciated that it's just really refreshing and I just love it where has this book been in my life I really really loved it if you just want to feel like you're in the Regency and you're going to balls and walking down Piccadilly and walking through the gardens uh it's just read this it is so immersive and i loved that about it so would recommend this massively i gave it a 4.5 out of 5 it was great nice so from the best book that i read in a while to one of the worst books that i read in a while uh it is the winner's curse by marie rudkowski oh god please don't hate me i'm sorry so this book takes place in a kind of historical slash dystopian fantasy setting where slaves are a thing again there are two kind of groups of people that are split one group are the slaves and one group are the kind of you know the rulers and they have all the power and everything and it's about a girl who gets a slave who's a boy there are some feelings developed and everything um i'm making it sound much less complex than it really is there was one part where the dynamics changed and everything was kind of twisted on its head i was like that's good that is a great idea but again like after that it just kind of went downhill it wasn't executed very well it wasn't very exciting i just felt like it was all fine it was okay could have been so much better i really wish that it had just been executed with more like zest and excitement and like oomph and she'd really like just gone to town and gone for it with the development and everything because it just felt really i give it a two out of five the next book i listened to an audiobook and it was we should hang out sometime by josh sunquist it's kind of like a memoir of all of his previous experiences with girls and why he hadn't been successful with asking out girls in the past and him meeting up with them now and chatting about it and just kind of seeing what he thought went wrong uh, which sounds interesting and kind of promising. I was like, that sounds like something I'd want to read. It sounds really interesting. But it all felt pretty shallow. I felt like there could have been a lot of depth to it. It's easily like a 12 metre pool, the whole love thing. And I feel like he went two metres down. It just didn't feel very well done. I felt like it could have been a lot better. So I gave it two out of five. Wouldn't massively recommend it. I'm really sorry if you like Josh Sunquist. I'm very, very sorry. The next book I listened to on audiobook again, and it is True Porn Clerk Stories by Ali Davis. This is like three hours long, and I thought it'd be entertaining and kind of interesting. And it was. It was like, it was a pretty entertaining listen. It's literally just what it says on the tin, um, with her talking about the many kind of different customers that she had and her opinions on porn. Good, very quick read so i gave it three out of five so the last book that i'm going to talk about is things we have in common by tasha kavanagh the narrator was really good of the audiobook that's quite rare with fiction i find the book follows a girl called yasmin who is still in school and is not very popular at all she's very overweight and she's bullied and i'm not sure what it is about her but she becomes very obsessed and very kind of focused on certain things uh and it's the story of that almost so the book is in the form of a letter to a man who she becomes kind of fixated on very bizarre i almost can't really say what else it's about because it's just very strange but it's definitely not very plot driven it's more of a character study i've heard it being compared to dare me but it is written very strangely because her 
thought process is so bizarre um, that it, yeah, it takes a while to get used to. I don't really know how else to say it. It's just very strange. It was definitely engaging and it kept me reading. I wanted to know what the F was happening. So props for that. I gave it three out of five. It was uh, interesting. That's it. Those are all the books that I have read lately. Thank you very much for tuning in. I really, really do appreciate it. Okay, that's everything. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. <laughs> I just love my new background. <laughs>